My mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Good morning. I would like to first thank this cathedral church and cathedral family for a wonderful moving ordination service that you held earlier the lesson is full of all kinds of confusion going on for me so I have to tell you that first that the disciples I think are some of my favorite people in scripture and the reason that they're my favorite is that they completely keep messing things up and Simon Peter is a special one uh, he always seems to find the truth and just when he pulls who do you say I am? And Simon Peter has said, you are the son of God, the Messiah. And Jesus has said, Simon Peter, you are the rock on which I will build my church. And so here we are saying, finally, Simon Peter is stepping in to his role. And then when Jesus says, I will be killed. Again, he reverts no longer Simon Peter back to Simon and says, Lord, this cannot happen. And I hear Peter speaking from a place of love. He's saying, Lord, you are the Messiah. You have come to redeem and liberate Israel. You are who we have been waiting for. There is no way you can be killed. That isn't the way the story is meant to go. And if there is anything I can do to stop it, I will stop it. And then Jesus turns to him and in a way that when I was growing up, I felt was exceedingly harsh says to him, get thee behind me, Satan. And I'm thinking, Lord, you could have just said, you know, Simon, we can talk about this a little bit later and I'll explain. <laughs> if there was no temptation for Jesus in hearing that, he could have just simply said, Simon, I'll explain it later. But we know, let this cup pass me by, that this, the reason that in admonishing Peter is because he too feels in some part of him that I would prefer not to die. And for me, that is such an empowering thing to know that my Lord struggles as we struggle with temptation. But that the love of God and the love for us made Jesus go to Calvary. That it is because Jesus so loved us that he took up the cross and died on it. And it is that love that Jesus then asks us to share with the rest of the world. A love that is willing to take up our crosses. And I think it's important that we recognize that Jesus never says in this gospel, you must pick up my cross. Jesus says, you must pick up your cross. Because there is no way that any of us could pick up the cross of Jesus. And there is no need for any of us to pick up the cross of Jesus. Because Jesus has already died for our sin. But each of us must from a place of love take up our cross that will heal this world.
And for each of us, that cross of love is going to look somewhat different. I think I learned a little bit about what my own cross looks like many, many years ago. Because two weeks before my wedding, my family and I and my then fiance went to the commemoration for those who were massacred on June 16, 1976 in Soweto, South Africa. And as the service was coming to an end, somebody came from outside and said, the police and the military are out there with guns and tear gas. And so the clergy left the service first to try and be a, a peaceful pathway for those leaving the service. And my father was one of those clergy, but we went into the back of the churchyard to wait for him to see people off. And as we were all standing in the back, some police jumped over the fence of the church and started beating us in, in that churchyard. And people ran to cars and hiding in the church, and I was not fast enough. And so I, I got beaten. My fiancé and I were beaten by the police. And somebody ran to tell my father that while you were out here trying to take care of the congregation, your children are being beaten. And so he came back, and I was crying, I was angry, and I said, you always tell us to love these people. You tell us that these are our brothers and our sisters. Are you going to tell me now that I'm supposed to love this man who beat me? And my father said, I can't tell you to love, to forgive, to pray for. I can pray that you can reach that place, and I can pray that we can all reach that place someday. And so for me, I know the cross of trying to love those who oppress and hate me. That is the cross of love that Jesus has placed on me. For each of us, what that cross is going to look like is going to be based on our own story. But underlying it all, it is the lesson that we cannot pay evil for evil. We cannot respond to hate with hate. That we are called to be those who love to be those who love our church family as Paul tells the Romans, but also to be those who love those who persecute and oppress us. As I start my ministry here, I pray that you will in your ministry help me to be a better bearer of my cross. And I also hope that you will be that family of love that Paul calls us to. And so as we begin our ministry together, I ask that you pray with me. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray you, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.